Hey guys, welcome back to the Almost Vegan Mommy. Tonight we are going to talk about why the keto diet is so awful for you and why you should never, under any circumstances, do the keto diet according to the mainstream uh, form. And I'm going to also show you, um, not show you, but tell you how to do a plant-based form of the keto diet, which is a lot more simple than how they tell you to do it. So, uh, we have, since 2017, since the craze of the keto diet, which is basically replaced the paleo diet came in, um, everyone's heard about it. And I feel like if someone's on the keto diet, within five minutes of talking with them, they're going to tell you about it. It's kind of like the same people that do CrossFit or sell essential oils. I feel like they're the same kind of people that are on the keto diet. So, like, I've been on the keto diet and I've lost so much weight. What about you? Oh yeah, I love keto diet. I also do CrossFit. Really? That's so cool. Yeah, I also sell essential oils. So, do you still use your regular household cleaners and Advil and stuff? You should totally switch to essential oils. Yeah, that's cool. Did I also mention I do CrossFit? The point I'm trying to make is you need to be informed before you do a major and according to health experts, an extreme unresearched diet that could have a long-term negative effect on your health. So the keto diet, as a lot of people know, started out for epileptics. And uh, back in France, 1911, that's when they found that doing very hardcore versions of water-only fasting for 18 to 25 days actually had a very high cure uh, percentage rate for epile epileptics. Um, it was stronger in adults and lesser in kids, about a 90% cure rate for adults and about a 60% cure rate for kids. So come uh, the 1920s and 30s, uh, they decided to start the ketogenic diet um, as an alternative to mainstream fasting, you know, water-only fasting, which I can't even imagine if you're a child how hard that would be to have food withheld from you. And so um, through research, and this is in really layman terms, they found that the ketogenic diet actually helped the 20 to 30 percent of epileptics that were not being cured from hardcore fasting with water only fasting, they found that the ketogenic diet actually helped them because everyone's body is different. Everyone's body responds differently to certain things. And so originally the ketogenic diet was for ep epileptics. It was not for weight loss. It was not some cool hip thing that everyone's doing in the media. Um, it was for epileptics, and it kind of went away until about the 1960s, and they started to reuse it again for the epileptic community. Um, and it's kind of just been for that until recent years, where it has started out as a huge weight loss craze. Now, I'm not denying that you are going to lose a crap ton of weight, okay? No one is refuting that right now. In fact, it has actually, in 2017 and in 2018, out of all the other diets out there, paleo, Atkins, plant-based, you name it, in two years running, it has won by national health experts the number one diet when it comes to weight loss, not overall health, but when it comes to weight loss. In fact, uh, health experts, and I am going to reference down below in the description where I'm getting a lot of this information, but national health experts have named it, and I quote, the worst of the worst for healthy eating. Now, for weight loss, it's the best of the best, but for overall healthy eating and overall health, it is, according to national experts, the worst of the worst. They've even called it, and I quote, um, extreme, you know, dangerous. They say that there's actually, besides epileptic studies, there is actually no independent research on this diet. It is still very unresearched, very dangerous when it comes to overall health, long-term cholesterol levels, long-term heart disease. Uh, they have actually said that prolonged ketogenic diet use can actually substantially increase your risk of heart disease and liver disease. Um, and the risk for diabetes, which comes from poor liver functioning. And so, really, the ketogenic diet is very dangerous in general. Um, so, why is it called keto? So, 
the non-layman uh, layman terms way to describe it is the ketogenic diet is manipulating your food intake uh, and you are inducing a ketosis. So ketogenic is derived from the word ketosis. Usually when you think of the word ketosis, you think that you're like basically just blot out and you're hallucinating because you know? so it's really manipulating your body, uh, lying to your body about the nutrition you're giving it and what you're giving it so you can manipulate it into doing what you want it to do and that's burning fat. Um, so you are manipulating your food intake you're inducing a ketosis, a physical state in which the body is flooded with ketones, tomato, tomato, a lot of people say it differently. Um, after, uh, instead of your body burning carbohydrates, the ketones are uh, produced after breaking down sources of fat, uh, both ingested fats and then your body's original natural fat storage. Um, and so basically when you're on the ketogenic diet, you're gonna have elevated ketone levels in your blood. Um, but that does not equal elevated health levels, okay? So just because you have elevated ketone levels in your blood does not mean that you're healthier or you're a more efficient, you know, physical machine. Um, an amazing thing, a uh, thing that I've read that compares it to is let's say you have this dilapidated shack of a house and for years you've been running it off of a wood-burning fireplace to heat it. And the ketogenic diet is these super cool solar panels that you're going to put on this tin roof that's barely staying in the first place to heat your house. Yeah, you're going to heat your house and you might even heat it faster and more efficiently, but you still have a dilapidated shack of a house that could fall apart at any second. And I'm referring to, I'm gonna be honest, the average American diet and physique. Um, just because you start on the ketogenic diet and you might lose weight faster it does not mean that you're healthier. It also doesn't mean that the moment you get off that diet, your body is going to remember and learn to keep burning fat. The only and most effective diet to date after hundreds of years of research, and not just America, but in thousands of different, or hundreds of different countries, is a plant-based whole foods diet. Um, that's the only thing that has been shown to overall um, raise overall health and long-term uh, extend lifespan and weight loss. Uh, so let's see. So basically, um, the uh, so I'm losing my place here. Um, so 70% of the calories from the keto diet are from fats. So you're like, okay, I don't really know what that means. You know, okay, 70% of the calories from the keto diet is from fats. Well, the U.S. Department of Agriculture actually suggests that the average American diet, and that's the average American diet, that doesn't mean that that is right, you know, compared to other parts of the country where their diets are actually better compared to the American diet. But the U.S. Department of Agriculture suggests that 30% of your calorie, daily calorie intake comes from fat. So you're looking at the ketogenic, and it is twice as much, more than twice as much, of what the U.S. Department of Agriculture suggests and the average American is actually not eating, when they're on the ketogenic, they think it gives them a free pass to do the bulletproof coffee and slap some butter in there and use organic whole cream in their coffee, which is just insane to me. Um, or eating bacon or sausages. All of these things are actually approved on the ketogenic diet because they're high in fat. You can actually take a stick of butter, wrap it with Kraft American cheeses and deep fry that bad boy into some oil and guess what? It's ketogenic diet approved, but that does not mean it's healthy. It is going to be a slim smidgen margin of Americans that are actually doing the ketogenic diet in a very healthy way. That are trying to get their fats from healthy sources like avocados and nuts. But the majority of people are just thinking, okay, I'm going to fast for the first six hours of the day and have my bulletproof coffee, which is just caffeine, and most Americans are dehydrated, and a big slap of butter in there. I know that you're lying to your body and teaching it to burn fat, but my God, you know, could you be any harder on your liver and your heart and your mind at that point? <laughs> I'm trying not to get off track and make this video longer than it has to be. Uh, so the diet actually by the World Health Organization and the U.S. Department of Agriculture has not been cleared for those with liver and kidney conditions. Now, most Americans have not been diagnosed with a liver or kidney con condition, even if they have one, okay? Not gonna get into the healthcare issue of this country, but a lot of people don't actually even realize that they have a liver or kidney condition 
just because no symptoms have maybe majorly popped up. They just feel fatigued, there may be some digestive issues, but they don't realize that's what's actually going on. And yet they're trying to lose weight with this diet, and this diet is actually very dangerous for people who have liver and kidney issues. Um, if not done with an emphasis on healthy fats, like nuts, avocado, like I said earlier, it is actually proven already, well basically since the 1960s, since it re-raised in popularity, that it will, it will, it's a fact, increase your risk of heart disease and diabetes. And so it's a very dangerous diet. I can understand if someone wants to do it for two weeks to lose a quick five pounds, but even then, half that time you're gonna get the keto flu, which a lot of people know about, where your body feels like crap, if I can say it in a polite way. And it's because your body is like, what the H-E double hockey sticks is going on right now? What are you putting into me? And what is happening? Um, so basically the diets that rank highest according to experts that you're gonna hear about in these weight loss magazines are just the ones that burn the highest fat. That doesn't mean that they are healthy. Uh, so I know that a lot of things happen with the ketogenic diet. Um, you know, I know that you have increased clarity, you have increased energy, but like I said, it's a manipulation. It is a short term positive effect for your body. About uh, 60 to 70 percent of people say that after a few weeks of being on the ketogenic diet, they actually crash. Their body starts to kind of backtrack on what's going on. The weight loss is still there, but they're like, I can't do it anymore. It is not a sustainable lifestyle diet. Um, you know, something you really have to look at uh, before I wrap up, so thank you for sticking with me. But something we also want to look at too is overall health. Just because you're on the ketogenic diet does not mean that you're going to initially lose weight. So, um, did you know that sleep deprivation, this can be for new moms, it can be for people who have anxiety or stress, um, at work, family issues, it's not just a new mom. If you are sleep deprived and not getting a solid seven to nine hours of good solid sleep every night, that it naturally in your body produces insulin resistance. And so I know a lot of people are like, I don't care, I don't know what that means. But if you have insulin resistance, Okay, this whole thing about elevated ketones in your blood, it's just gonna be a negative effect. You're not gonna lose the weight anyways because you can't, you can't process what's going on in your bloodstream and so the weight's gonna stay there. And so you really have to think about your overall health. Are you reducing stress in your life? Are you getting adequate sleep? Don't just go to the short-term solution of wanting to lose 10 pounds. Um, so basically, let me just describe lastly a fat cell. I don't have any cool animation here, I'm pretty old school. But your fat cells, which is what the ketogenic diet is targeting, fat cells can't be obliterated, they can't go away unless you're in lipo, okay? But the ketogenic diet, what it's gonna do is it's going to shrink the fat cell and that's how you're losing weight. Now, uh, my biggest concern, especially trying to be plant-based or almost vegan, okay, because I do egg whites and stuff like that, um, is the cholesterol saturated fat level because I'm thinking about overall health, you know, I'm thinking about the plaque in my arteries and whatnot. You know, most kids by the age of 10 already have fatty streaks in their arteries. Um, so I'm thinking about cholesterol, that's my biggest thing. And when a fat cell shrinks, okay, and this is for the average non plant based eating person, the cholesterol that's in that flat fat cell, yes, you're losing weight and you look healthier and you feel, you might even feel healthier um, at first but the cholesterol in that fat cell has to go somewhere. So it is actually re-released into the bloodstream, which then that cholesterol goes back into your liver and then is secreted through the bile in your system. And so when you're having this intense weight loss really fast in your body, all these fat cells are shrinking, you know, you're losing weight, you have to think all that cholesterol is being released into your body back into your bloodstream and your arteries and into your liver and so i know a lot of people say well you know yeah i had like some uh, my cholesterol raised a little bit i was on a ketogenic diet but i'm losing weight and i feel great you are releasing so much not just the cholesterol that has been stored up in your fat cells in the first place being re-released into your system but the new cholesterol you are now taking in from the animal products that you are ingesting while on the ketogenic diet. So like I said, it is an awful diet, it's terrible for you, and don't just do it because you're going to lose weight. Um, you know, and you really have to think too, when you're consuming these animal products and this dairy product, it's more than just uh, cholesterol and saturated fat. You've got all of these processing chemicals. I think, uh, what the hell, that could be totally wrong, but it's one of my favorite documentaries. I'm one of those people. But I think they said the average 
uh, animal product, even natural organic, has 37 potential chemicals present in it, which is just crazy. Um, you have to think there's heme iron, antibiotics, elevated sodium that's in these animal products. Sodium makes you bloat. So yeah, you're losing weight, but you're also bloating because the sodium levels. So there's a lot more than just, you know, um, the cholesterol in the animal products. You also have to remember too, the World Health Organization, I think it was back in 2016, and it still stands today, listed processed meats as a group one carcinogenic, uh, carcinogen. You know, it's up there with cigarettes. And so, yeah, you're losing weight, but what are you putting into your system long term? You know, how are you affecting your overall health? Uh, as I wrap up, guys, I just wanted to share one thing. If you're going to do um, a ketogenic diet, you know, or if you are plant-based and you're like, well, great, you know, I can't do the ketogenic diet and lose 10 pounds in two weeks or something like that. Uh, you can actually do a plant-based. It's much simpler. You don't have a wide range of things you can eat, and you can't eat Kraft American singles, you know, and feel great and be like, oh, I'm ketogenic diet, I'm gonna lose weight, and I'm gonna give me some more butter. But it is very healthy, and my husband actually, who's an, who's an ultra marathoner, does smoothies like this often. So you uh, want to do some kind of nut butter, okay? You can do peanut butter, but make sure it's organic, doesn't have as much oil, added oils into it. But you're basically going to do a smoothie to taste unsweetened almond milk because you still want to reduce the amount of sugar. Um, you can add in there, like I said, any kind of nut butter. I do a whole avocado in my smoothie because you really don't taste it, um, but it adds a lot of good healthy fat and keeps me full. And then I also do a scoop of chia seed, a tablespoon of chia seeds, and a tablespoon of ground flax seed. I whirl that up in my blender and I will drink that. It takes me like 30 minutes to drink because it's like so much but I can go to like 2 p.m. and not eat. So if you're gonna do any kind of theory or form of ketogenic diet, please do it in a smart way like that where you are ingesting healthy fats. I just wanna say one more thing that I forgot to mention earlier um, in my talk, which I apologize because I am almost done. Um, but I know the big thing for ketogenic dieters is anti-carbs, anti-carbs. Carbs make you fat. Carbs actually don't make you fat. When you ingest um, a carbohydrate, it's going to do one of two things. It's going to be stored as glycogen into your system to be used as an energy source later on. So if you're not that active, yeah, you should watch your carbs. But if you're very active, you're going to be okay. Your body is going to constantly be processing those carbohydrates. Or the moment you ingest that carbohydrate, the second way it can use it is as an initial right then and there energy source. So carbohydrates are not stored in your system in the fat cells to make you fat. That is animal products. That is unhealthy fats. Um, so like I said, carbs are not the enemy. Long term, fats and animal products is what sticks in your system. Your body has a terrible time digesting and breaking down. And that's over a long period of time makes you large. And so guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I apologize for the length of the video. But now you know the truth behind the ketogenic diet. And go out there and try and convert people and make them see the light. Bye guys, make sure to like and subscribe.